Uh, form for the planar tracking, so that's what we're filling out today. Next class, we will do the form for the uh, camera tracking, which is what I'm going to go over today, so you can see that. So this assignment is planar tracking. The due date for this one will be Monday at the end of class, so the 26th. Uh, eight, eight. February, that is 26, 2018. And our description is we're going to be exploring the uh, methods of planar tracking with a nuke. Uh, originally, I was going to go through the ones for, um, like, have an actual assignment for the ones for losing it. What is it called? Layer, nope, animation, Mocha, there we go. Uh, for Mocha, but I'm just going to show that just so you can see it. Mocha is a program that comes with After Effects, um, so I'll show how that works, uh, but we won't have an assignment for that one just because of how much tracking we're doing in Nuke, just so you can see it. Um, so use planar tracking will be our learning objective, our main one, to isolate elements. We're going to replace at least three items using different importing methods, such as before, like we did Photoshop, something you create inside Nuke you could use, something you create in Maya or, Un um, or After Effects or whatever, a piece of video you have, anything. Uh, doo -doo. Use noise, uh, oops, sorry, not noise correction. Use uh, lens correction. And there we go. And then we'll put add slash remove noise. So typically, just like we did before in the other one, we remove noise from the image and then we added it back in at the end. We would do the same thing here. We would remove noise at the beginning of it and then we would add noise back in at the end so that all of our stuff looks correct. Now, in that same um, area, it would be just like color grading and adjusting oops, focus of items. Okay, ideally that's the compositing part is making sure that the things that we're doing actually look like they're inside the scene. So if I track something and I throw a picture of a cat on the wall, I want it to look like there's actually a picture of a cat on the wall versus just like this really sharp crystal clear image when everything else is blurry. So because our camera's moving, we have to introduce motion blur because we have um, other stuff going on. Obviously we have to make sure everything matches correctly. Uh, add quite range. And yeah, that's it. All right, so that should work there. All right, and for this one, you're going to be turning in your project folder, but I only want the essentials for this one. And the essentials in this case are a movie file, like your rendered out movie, and a snapshot of your node graph. Okay, so I'll show how to take a snapshot of your node graph. So I don't need your actual nuke file or your whole folder with all of your assets and everything in there. I just want to see the end movie of how everything comes together. And then I want to see a picture of your node graph to verify that everything is nicely organized. Okay. So our movie that we'll be turning in will be a 1280 by 720. Oops, that will go into resolution. 1280 by 720 at 30 frames per second. And the movie will be um, composited items tracked in scene. And then our still image will just be a the snap of the node graph.
And that one can also be just 1280 by 720. There's no frames per second on that one. Come on, other screen. And then the points for this one. Eight points for that one. Cool. And then make sure you put your name on there. Make sure you put your class number and name. And then obviously when you turn it in, the turn in date and all that other stuff. Cool questions on the submission form? Okay, so again, not fantastic footage, but it works for what we're doing. Now, what the first tracking that we did was 2D tracking. Um, then we did planar tracking. This is 3D tracking. So instead of this just isolating an element, it's actually going to be tracking the entire camera movement and rebuilding how this camera is moving around our scene. So you don't want anything huge in here. This is a five second clip of me just turning the corner, okay? You want to have enough detail in there of um, not only um, the items that we will be replacing, obviously the screens, but you want to have other items that are kind of stable in the shot that we can obviously um, track or help us track. Um, notice how there's no people in here. If there are people moving, those people moving can destru destroy our track, so we have to remove those people from being tracked. Okay. So luckily that room was empty. I was able to go in there and do a couple sweeps. So, oops hid that. Okay. So um, same thing as before, bring in After Effects, find a nice little clip, export it out as a TIFF sequence, and then bring it into Nuke. So you'll see that this is going to look very similar to what we were just working on. All right, so you see that I have color bars, they're on the screen. Now the difference between these color bars being on the screen and the ones that we just dealt with, the ones before, the second that those color bars are off the screen, they just stop moving. In this instance, those color bars are, ever, are never actually moving. What's moving is a 3D camera inside of Nuke that's basically re, re, uh, replicating my same camera move that I did. Okay, it's still wiggling because I have a uh, thing I was playing with right here, if I just disable that. And I turn my motion blur off a little bit, it'll be better. All right, All right so here's our setup that we're going to do. So as before, we read in our footage. I have uh, my folder set up, so I have a scenes folder. I have a source images folder. I bring in oops, my sweep. There it is. And I'm going to connect my viewer to it so we can see that. All right. I also need to hit S so that I can go to my uh, settings down here. This is my file name. So I put that in my scenes folder, call it Sarcona Cam Track 1. This is my project folder. So I linked that to my main uh, camera tracking folder. I make sure my frames per second are set to 30. I make sure that my full size format is HD 720. I can also set my frame range right here so that it's the same frame range as the footage that I brought in. And if I'm not sure, I double click the footage and then I can see what frames those are and then make sure those are typed in there. Okay. So for every project we do, those are standard things that we're going to do. Read the footage in, make sure that we're set to the correct values here. All right. So now if this was a planar track, we'd make a roto, we'd isolate an element, and then we would track it back and forth and then create an item. This is a camera tracker, so I'm going to add a camera tracker. Okay, now this is um, a bit simpler setup than the other one because a lot of this is automated. That's the whole point of camera tracking. I'm going to go to the auto track or the settings area and go to preview. So before, when we did 2D tracking, we put a little marker 
and the 2D tracker was following basically that pixel pattern frame by frame. Here, it's following each one of these dots frame by frame. And depending on how many numbers I put here, let's just go like crazy, like 5,000, it'll track 5,000 points. Now, just because we have more points does not mean it's gonna be more accurate, okay? It just means it's gonna take longer. So something that's at like 100 or 250 or even 300, typically, oh, come on. I don't know what that was. <laughs> I should read my errors before I close them, all right. So something at like 300 um, is typically a good number. So that's plenty of tracks here. Now, there are reflections on the screens. Notice how there's no tracks on those reflections on the screen. So it was actually a bit smart and was able to pick off the fact that I don't want those areas to be tracked. If they were tracked, I can always delete them later or I can mask them off, okay? Especially if there was a person in the scene who's kind of like shimming in the chair, I can create a mask and cut them out of there if I need to, okay? So that's my setup. I go here to my preview features, I say 300, then I go to my tracker, and then I'm going to track this um, in a second. Uh, the more information, um, actually I can just track that, there we go. The more information that we give Nuke about what kind of camera this is, the better off that uh, our track could be. So I shot this with a Nikon D7000. So if I Google Nikon D7000 sensor size, I'll see that my sensor size is 23.6 by 15.6 millimeters. I can punch those values into Nuke, and when it solves, it'll actually know more information about that camera. If I know what's, what uh, focal length I shot that at, I can also punch that into Nuke, and again, it would help solve the camera a little bit better. I know that with this shot, I don't need to do the focal length stuff. All I need to do is punch in my film backside, which is my sensor, 23.6 by 15.6. And it's in millimeters. Some software is in inches. Um, I have it at no lens distortion for now because I don't really need that. And then I have an unknown constant lens. That means that I'm not zooming in and out. Okay, so I, it knows that I'm not doing that. And that should be good. Okay, so I've tracked my footage. Those are all the tracking points. Okay, now that means pretty much nothing to us yet. When we hit solve, now what it's gonna do is figure out how these points are moving, how these points are moving, how the ones on the floor are moving, and then it'll create a 3D camera. Everything that's in green is good, everything that is in red is bad, and everything in the middle is in between, it doesn't know. So as I scrub through here, you'll see that we have a lot of green good tracks, and then a lot of obviously red tracks in some areas. So I'm gonna to go to my auto tracks and I'm gonna go down to here where we have some error refinement stuff. So right now my max error is set to 5.89 and my max track error is set to 2.97. I can pull this down a little bit, pull that one down a little bit. What I don't wanna do is pull it down all the way where it's completely red. Then I have nothing that's tracked, okay? You will have some sort of error on here. Ideally, something like about that seems like a good sufficient amount to track. Okay, just like before, it's all about contrast. So the more contrast we have, the better off our tracks are gonna be. All right, so once I've adjusted that, I go back to my tracker, I say update, I uh, hit okay, and then it's gonna go through and it's gonna update. Cool. So now if I, um, uh, yeah, that's good, that's good. Okay, cool. Um, only thing I have to do now is create a camera. Okay, so our output before was either a, tra a transform node, I guess I created two, uh, a transform node or a corner pin or a tracker or something else. When we use the camera tracker, what we get out of that is an actual camera. So now if I come up to here and I hit the tab key and I spin around, so for you non-3D people, um, Alt and then right mouse button does tracking. Alt and middle mouse button zooms in and out. And then Alt and left, oops. Um, every software is different. Which one am I in now? <laughs> I just need to spin around. Why aren't you letting me spin? This, this. Oh, 
I was locked into the camera. That's why it didn't let me spin. So this little thing locks you into the camera. So I unlock it, and now I can Alt, left mouse button, move around the scene a little bit better. Okay, so Alt, right is spinning, Alt, left is panning, and then Alt, middle is zooming in and out. So there, oh, let me hide this other thing so you don't need to see that. There we go. So this is basically all of those points that we just tracked. Those are them kind of scattered around the scene. And if I double click on the camera that we just solved, you'll see there's the camera. And if I hit play, what we should see is that camera moving. What we should see is that camera moving. There it goes. Um, Nuke has a weird thing where sometimes it just, you hit play and it doesn't update the camera. I don't know why it doesn't do that. Okay. If I click and drag, it works. If I hit play, it doesn't. So just deal with that. So that looks like that's my camera move right there. Now what we'll see is there's a lot of points in here that don't really make sense. Like if you look at where the camera moves right here and then turns the corner, that's pretty much what I did. I was in that room over there. I walked a little bit and I turned the corner. There's computers and screens right in front of me. So it doesn't really make sense that there will be points way out here. Okay, so these points that are way out far away, those are typically bad points and we really wouldn't use them, okay? Uh, but we just ignore them, they're good enough for what we're doing. All right, so I'm gonna hit tab again just to get back to where we were. There we go. And I'm gonna go back to my camera tracker uh, and then I'm gonna add in right after my camera tracker, a model builder, okay? So what this is gonna let me do is actually build, instead of building a uh, corner pin or building a, tra a tracker or something like that, it's gonna let me build an actual piece of geometry where I can put that on the screen and then that piece of geometry will stay locked to the screen wherever I move. So if I go to uh, the model builder, I only have to set up one thing here, which is this camera. So the camera goes to the camera and the source should automatically be connected to my camera tracker, okay? So now I go back to this. And then it doesn't matter where you start this at as long as you do it in an area where you can see the item that you're trying to put in place. So let's say for this case, I wanna put an item right here on this screen. I'm gonna go to a frame where it's pretty clear, like right about there. And with the model builder selected, I'm gonna to go to create a shape. Okay, so all this is is basically like a corner pin, but it's done in 3D. I click and drag and roughly size it. And then I'm just gonna drag the corners to where they need to be. Now, unfortunately, the screens are, are rounded at the top and then pretty sharp at the bottom, like where the black hits. We'll adjust that later. So you just have to imagine where those corners would meet. So I'm just gonna drag these to the corners here. You can see the little magnifier right there. Um, you can change this to, let's say, 4X if you really need to get in there, or 8X if you need to get closer. I'm gonna move this one up. You can also move this in here. And good, okay? So let's say that this is good right there. Um, if I zoom in just with my scroll wheel, I may want to finesse that just a little bit. There we go, cool. All right, so now that's locked into this area for that specific frame, all right? So now I need to scoot my camera up or my frames up a little bit. So I'm gonna go up to, let's say, 46. And you'll see how this like slides off of that area, okay? In order for this to work, Nuke doesn't know where that's at. If I were just to have created a corner pin and put a piece of geometry there, it doesn't know where this item is. It's just kind of like eyeballing it. But the second I start to adjust it and say, no, this item is supposed to be right there, now that item is locked into it. Okay, now if I come up a little bit further, like right here and it's still off, then I can go back and again, just tweak it. And you'll see that what Nuke's gonna try to do is it's gonna try to maintain that perspective of that item throughout it. And you can see even when my camera goes off, even when that screen is no longer on there, it's still moving, it's like right there. It's still adjusting where that's at. So I'll do that again with another piece. So let me grab this here. 
And I'll find another item. Let's grab that again. And I will do this. And then I'll line up my corners. This one, and that one, and this one, and that one. You don't need to worry about the center ones, just the outside corners. You adjust your frames, you replace it, and you'll see how it's actually like, as I slide it, it's sliding like in perspective back to where it needs to be. I didn't like something about that one. So now I have these two items tracked, okay? Um, cool. So now let's go to the next step. Let's put something actually on the screens. So these exist right now just in Model Builder. So I have to go to my card one and bake the geometry. Then I go to card two and I bake that geometry. So what this is doing is it's actually creating these two cards. One is for the first monitor, one is for the second monitor. I don't know why this one's called three and this one's called one. Number two. Nope. Oh, two is probably by the other one. Um, so now what I have to do is make a little scene inside here. Okay, so I'm going to hit the tab key. I'm going to type in scene. And then anything that is 3D, which are these three items right now, those three items I just connect to here. Okay, so now I have my camera connected, I have my model builder connected, and then I have my model builder geo connected to this. And then I'm gonna take this. This is all 3D. If I hit the um, tab key, it doesn't show me any of the 3D stuff. Okay, Nuke has to have a way to take 3D and make it into something 2D, which we can see here. So what we use is a scan line render. So this is very similar to something you would see just like inside Maya or whatever, is that we built a scene in 3D in Maya, and then we have to render it out in order to get it to Nuke. So what Nuke does is right inside it, we have a 3D scene, then we're rendering it out, and then Nuke can actually see what renders out of there. Okay. The only thing we have to hook up for this is the camera. Now, I don't know why it has to go through scene and then through camera too, um, also, but it does. Okay. Background could get this, but I'm not going to do that. Okay, I'll, I'll attach that later. All right. So now if I look through my scan line render, there we go. Perfect. <laughs> okay. I don't have anything connected to the images. So if I were to hit A, you'll be able to see there's those images lined up perfectly with where they should have been in the shot. But there's nothing actually attached to them right now, so they won't actually do anything. So if I make a color bars, which is obviously our favorite thing to make, and then we connect it to that, I hit A again, there's the color bars. I will use the same color bars for both of these so I can see them. And then to be able to put these together, I just use a merge node right there. So now when I rewind this and then I play it, that one's still a little bit off. So that might have been part of a bad track that I was attaching it to. I'll have to redo that one. So you can see how well this is because realistically now anything that we want, we can just put in there. And the cool thing about it is that like a corner pin, as we get closer to a corner pin, it's stretching it out. As we get further away, it's squishing it in. This is going to maintain that same resolution on there regardless of where we're at because that camera is basically just zooming into that area. Now to get our motion blur, because you can see this is definitely not blurry, it's very crisp, all of that is done in the render. So I just go into the render, I go to multi-sample, and I just have to take these samples up. So maybe like three, maybe five, a bit better. And then you can play with the shutter to control how much blur you're getting on there. It's good enough for now, at least. 
okay? Uh, and then I'm going to go to my merge and just set this to a plus. And when I set it to plus, look at, let me uh, undo this sampling so you can see it better. You'll be able to see some of the reflections that were already on the screen are now like inside this image. So as I rewind it and play, you can see some of the reflections are actually in the color bar area. Okay. So once you put an actual image on there, it'll look much, much better. Um, cool. So this is the setup for this one. So we have our read, we camera tracked it, we did a model builder that creates a camera. Um, or sorry, the camera tracker creates a camera, then we use the model builder. We use the model builder to create these two pieces of geometry. And then we just pipe everything through a scene node into a renderer and then merge it all in. And now this image here can be anything. Now I can drop a picture of Santa Claus over here and then that would work perfectly. I could even take my uh, original footage and drop that in and now there my original footage is on that screen. And some trippy format, okay? And then this is what would allow us to actually track just this wall and replace just that wall because that wall would actually be a standing object. It's not moving, it's not shimmering around. As long as our camera track is good, everything else should be good. We should be able to create nice smooth tracks for all the other stuff. Cool, so once you get done with your planar tracking, then you can start jumping onto um, this one here. And then again, what's kind of neat about this, um, now that we're in the 3D realm, um, let me see if I have that already saved. There, 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 20, nope. Uh, where did I put that? Well, I'll just show you real quick. There's this cool uh, tool that one of the other students showed me. Oops. So this is some random guy, <laughs> and um, it's called Keen Tools. And if I go to Face Builder, well, there we go. So it just needs a random camera kind of somewhere, and it needs that. And then I'm going to say Center Geometry. There it is. And I have to take this picture and crop it into just one of these. So let me just go to crop. And then I will grab probably a three quarter view like this one is good enough. Actually, that bottom one looks good. Reformat, perfect. There it is. All right. So now what I do with this is I can just take this and line up all the features of the character. Oops. We'll just say that that is good. And now I can go to my results. Uh, that's good there. Look at the camera colors. And I'm just going to connect the image into this. Nope, that's not the image. <laughs> Don't connect the image into that. Uh, Oh, I had to do it a different way. But anyway, this gives me like a 3D head because now we're working in 3D. So anything we build in 3D, we can actually bring back into this. Let me find the one that I did because it was pretty sweet. P drive there.
Now this Keen uh, area or tool set or company, whatever it is, they make a geo tracker. So not only can we track a camera and actually create a camera that moves around, but we can actually isolate just a piece of geometry with that tracker and it'll track that piece of geometry so that it moves with it. Um, you could also do a face tracker, which is again, really cool. Are you still opening? There you go. So with this one, this was the geo tracker. So if you look at uh, Greg's computer here, oops, back up. There's actually a piece of geometry tracked to his monitor versus just a flat plane, which again, I could then replace with the model of a geometry of a screen or whatever. Because now it's actually like locked into that area. Again, much tighter than it would be with the planar track or the 2D tracks. Um, what did I do with a head? Let's do it this way. There are cubes, cubes, macro animation. Oops, date, that's what I want. Oh, face, that's what it's called. So I've just started playing with it, but you can see like there's that guy's face in 3D. Now it doesn't work this way because <laughs> it stretches it out. Um, but if I switch my project to this view and then I switch my camera around, when did I do that before? I had to move this camera around to the other side. Transform Geo. Oops, nope. Axis. And then I rotated it 90 degrees. Come on. So it's a little bit longer set up, but you get the idea there. So the idea is you're able to create basically a 3D head pretty quickly. And then what's really neat about this is that you can take this face builder and just export out certain features. So if I just wanted his face, I could export out just his face. And now I can really adjust the camera so that it's a little bit nicer looking. So his eyes actually line up with his eyes. That would make more sense. Face builder, frame, close enough, okay? Now what you can do with this, once you have that, is that, I'll just show it because they have, me explaining it is not gonna do it any justice. 